Hello, and welcome to Selling in a Skirt with Judy Hoberman. I'm Judy. Now, as always, for those of you that are return listeners, welcome back. And for the new ones, we are so excited to have you here. Selling in a Skirt is all about community, connection, and creating these amazing relationships. We empower professional women, and we always encourage men to advocate, champion, and be sponsors for women. Now, what I love most about what I get to do is I get to introduce you to so many amazing people, and today is no exception. So I'm going to read a little bit about my guest, but I'm going to let him tell you everything. So here's what's going on. Today, we have Greg Worth. He's the Dean of Workforce Education at the Florida State College of Jacksonville. He's Dr. Wirth. He provides strategic leadership and management for a comprehensive range of career and technical education programs. His responsibilities span across 11 non-credit programs and 15 continuing workforce education programs, including programs in construction, in logistics, in the trades, in healthcare and beauty, you name it, they do it. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Greg talk about a little bit what he does and everything else. So welcome, Greg. I am so, so, so excited to have you here. Judy, thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak today. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I think this show and what you've done in your platform is is pretty, is just amazing. And so congratulations on everything. And, uh, and I'm sorry that you have to talk to and listen to me today, but I do really appreciate the opportunity for to be here. Um, as Judy said, I'm Greg Worth. I'm the Dean of Workforce Education at Florida State College at Jacksonville. We run short-term programs, entry-level programs for individuals to come in, uh, sometimes retool themselves or, or prepare themselves to go into, whether it's a construction trade like welding or electri- uh, electricity, um, uh, or in, in healthcare, like practical nursing, medical assisting, nursing assistant, uh, you know, you, the gamut, right? Uh, our CDL program, uh, which is our commercial vehicle driving program, is one of the top in the, the country. We have people that come all, all around, not from anything that I do, but from some great program management and, and great leaders that, that we have here at the college that have built and established uh, wonderful programs. And so what I do is I support those leaders. And so I help them find what they need when they need additional resources, uh, to, uh, if they need additional personnel or, or whatever. We also work to bring in grants. We connect uh, from employers and, and build industry connection and bridges. And, and so that's what I feel like I do every single day is I'm having a conversation on one of those topics trying to make a difference for for some of the students that come through uh, and touch base here in Northeast Florida. Well, you're very modest. And I know when I told you originally that we were going to share your brilliance, you're like, what? What kind of that? What are you talking about? You are, you know, you're the one that actually creates the culture. You're the one that creates the opportunities. You just have the right people around you to make it happen. So, but I know there's always a backstory and not all of us grew up saying, well, I want to be the dean of a college or I want to be this. So what's your backstory? How did you get to where you are today? So that that's really, yeah, absolutely. That was like the, the last thing that was on my mind. Um, I grew up in Western Kentucky uh, and I was working in marketing uh, or in banking for in marketing, but in, in the banking realm about the time what 2008 happened. And so I started looking for different opportunities um, because of what was happening in the banking industry. I reached out to a friend of mine at the college and I said, hey, you know, do you know anybody? And he said, uh, this was at Murray State University. And he said, yeah, I, he goes, I'm actually looking for a lecturer. Uh, do you want to come in and, you know, work for me? And I was like, Sure, why not? So I went up there and and just really fell in love, fell back in love with education uh, and taught four years at Murray State University. It was a, uh, we taught communication, uh, interpersonal uh, communication in the workplace uh, and some leadership courses and things of that nature. And it was just absolutely beautiful experience. My wife came, uh, I came home one day and my wife was sitting there and she goes, hey, I got a promotion. And I was like, Oh, cool. And she was like, it's a thousand miles away. And I was like, huh. And so we started having that conversation. My wife is the more more talented one in the family. And so we ended up moving to uh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, the Philadelphia region. And I had the opportunity to work at uh, the University of Pennsylvania, which is a large Ivy League institution. I was in uh, fundraising there and it was an amazing experience to see how that institution works and that institution of that caliber works. Then we moved um, further to uh, Savannah and I was at Georgia Southern. 
and then we moved here. Workforce was not what I did. Workforce was not in my, my realm of, of what I was uh, aiming to do. It found me and I fell in love with it. Uh, when I was brought into this role and kind of developed uh, into even this position, it didn't exist uh, when I came on board. Um, being able to go back to the marketing in the industry uh, relationship experience in the past and business development and bring it into education and really bring all of my experience together. Uh, it, it really, it's been, it's been fantastic. And, and I, I love this space. This is the space I want to be in for the remainder of the career. Okay, so you, you brought up the, you know, the perfect topic about workforce. A lot of people don't know what workforce is, a lot of people do. So tell us what workforce is to you and to Jacksonville College, but also what it means, you know, how it's changed over the past few years. Sure, uh, well, what workforce is, is we have all of these industries that are, they're in desperate need of talented, trained, skilled employees, right? And, and you know, that we're, we're missing that. There, we Here in Jacksonville, North Florida, Northeast Florida, we have more jobs than we have people, right? I mean, it's just the way it is. And it's we've seen this giant expansion uh, in the marketplace uh, and it's been, fan, it's been fantastic. I mean, you know, I think we were just named one of the top two employers or top five employers uh, by the Wall Street Journal, um, sorry, uh, 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 it, just this past week, uh, you know, our region uh, from employment standpoint. So there are there's so many jobs here and we need talented individuals. And so what we do is we work with business and industry. We consistently talk to them and then we help build pipelines uh, into into that organization. We also work with nonprofit organizations and work with uh, uh, marginalized or, or um, communities that that were unrepresented previously. And we try to create a pipelines to bring those individuals through our programs and also connect them with industry. And so uh, we spend a lot of time all, all day long making that, what are the skills that are necessarily needed for this particular job? What's the amount of jobs that are out there? And then how do we uh, go out and recruit students that want, you know, would be interested in those types of programs? And some of our programs are through the Florida Department of Education, and those are fantastic. And we have, you know, large frameworks like our welding program or our commercial vehicle driving program uh, or practical nursing. And then other ones are what's considered continuing workforce education. And we have a lot of flexibility. So like when the, uh, the Alarm Association of Florida, which has since changed names, came and said, hey, could you build a low voltage tech program for us? We sat down with them, listened to their needs, and we built a program specifically for, for, for them. And so we're constantly having those conversations and adjusting our curriculum to make sure that we're matching what the industry needs here locally. That's amazing. And especially, you know, because there are so many jobs and there aren't so many qualified people to take those positions. You know, so um, I know why workforce is so important in today's market, but there's many there's many people that are talking about post secondary um, education, and people are looking for things that don't exist. But people, there are companies that are looking for specific things. So you just said you built a program. How common is that? I mean, can you how fast can you turn something around? Especially since half the things that are going to happen for next year haven't been invented yet. You know? I, I would love to tell you that it happens like overnight. We're able to it make it happen, happen right? <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight, right? Uh, because we, we, we need to build the and make sure that we have the learning objectives that, that are needed, right? And that we've tested those and make sure that what we're, we're teaching to is, is, you know, bringing that. Um, for instance, that low voltage program probably took us a, a year long to bring on board. Uh, and so... And I, I, th I think we could have done it a little bit faster, but there were a couple of other things and the association also was making some changes. And so that, that might have, you know, like uh, um, changed it a little bit. But overall, you know, right now we're working on building a, 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 a short term AI certificate. Right. Uh, and it's we're going to start with like a three hour workshop. Well, we built that in like, you know, relatively lightning speed just because we have the uh, subject matter expert expertise to do that with our faculty. Um, but a longer program um, we're looking at, it's, it's taking a little bit. So we're, we're gonna create some teasers and then we're gonna come out with a more artificial uh, generative AI uh, program that's, that's a little bit longer in length that, that's taking us, you know, 
maybe six to eight weeks uh, or six to eight months to, to actually build it out and make it, make yeah, it work. Yeah, but that's relatively short anyway, when you really think about it, it really is. Sure. So, you know, is there a special kind of university that says we need to have workforce? Because not all schools have that. And, you know, I mean, I'm thinking that in this environment, it's even more and more important. So what makes, you know, what makes your school, the Florida State College of Jacksonville, what makes you the perfect university to do that? I know there's a few in Dallas that are do that, to, that do that. I mean, but what, what is it about you that says, okay, we're gonna listen to what people really need and we're gonna do it? Sure. Um, from our standpoint, you know, we are a, a community college. Uh, well, we're the community's college is the way we like to say it. Of course, we have associate's degrees, AS degrees. We do have a few bachelor's degrees based on uh, some changes that happen. Um, in Florida, the community college space, a lot uh, like Texas, has always had a large workforce cont contingency. And mm -hmm. so that, that that is always uh, ever present. And so uh, different states seem to do it a little bit different. You are starting to see more universities get into it because they're also seeing it as an opportunity to, to another avenue to build revenue, right? And so uh, they're, they're looking at it from that perspective where we're looking at it a little bit like, how can we create a, a, a pipeline or a pathway for students? When I'm talking about students that I'm trying to bring into a nursing assistant program, I don't want them to stop there, right? I want to bring them in. I want to train them and get them. But what we're making sure that we're doing is we're building the necessary pathway. So you can go from nursing assistant to practical nurse to, you know, uh, ASN to BSN and so on and so forth, right? right? And so we're looking at all of our different areas to make sure that those pathways are established and where they're not, we're really having hard conversations with ourselves to see what kind of articulated credit can we provide or what can, what, what kind of pathway and how can we even work with students to, to push them f further. We've talked about stackable credentials in education for maybe a 20 years or so. I feel like here at the college, we've been actually really doing it for the last you know couple of years and, and it's really pretty exciting. I love the idea when you say you're building a pathway for students because I think a lot of times people, you know, students will get a certification in something and then, okay, we're done now. So I think it's really important that you're actually giving them the, the blueprint to do this. So how many, you know, do you have a lot of students that start with this and go all the way to this with you or, or somewhere else? Uh, I, 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 we don't have, I'm not going to say a lot. With like, I believe that this is still in the infancy stage, right? So uh, from that perspective, we yes, we do have students. And in fact, we just brought on um, a, a part-time advisor who, who she's full-time, but she's gonna be working part-time uh, on the healthcare side, whose sole job is to reach out to students and talk to them about grant opportunities, reach out to alumni and ask them to come back to, to build that pathway forward. Uh, we're also working with like local industry, like we're working with one of the local hospital systems uh, where we're, we're teaching CNAs to become practical nursing uh, on their location or another one where we're actually working with um, individuals from food services, from call centers, and we're training them to be medical assistants. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're actually teaching that on site in those, in, uh, at those institutions, as well as at our own. We've also taken these same programs and we've taken them to the high school and we're providing what's called dual enrollment, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, this is something that's new for our vocational programs that uh, we launched last year. And currently we have six and so we're really excited and we're seeing a lot of expansion. Well, we just, um, we just want to, we're awarded a grant from the state to kind of fund some of uh, these, to build some of these labs out so we can have real equipment that, uh, that's embedded in, into some of our high schools. And so those students are really seeing some uh, top of the line uh, experiences. And so it's pretty exciting what's happening there. <clears throat> Earlier, you mentioned what's changing in workforce Pre-pandemic, I was knocking on people's door. I was making phone calls. I was, you know, it was me going out and it was an action uh, going in that direction. Post-pandemic, it's the opposite. It's the phone rings, the phone rings. It's, oh, here's the, you meet somebody somewhere and they're like, here's my card, call me and let's, let's make this happen. And so 
Um, it, it's a great time to be in this space. It's a great time to be, to be building these programs for industry. Yeah, and I was going to say, I have an interesting story, and, and I was going to say, has this changed at all? So we were having um, some kitchens and bathroom, a kitchen and bathrooms done in our home, and the tile work is beautiful, and you know it's not easy. And, and the tile guy was like eyeballing everything, you know, he and cut, and cut. Well, his son shows up one day, and he, you know, it's a father-son team now, and he really loves doing tile work. However, his degree is in accounting, and he said to me, I, you know, I really love numbers, but it's not my passion. And so I looked at him and I said, and? And he said, I want to do tile work. He said, but my father can like eyeball everything and just cut it. He said, I actually take the tools out and I use my numbers. And so he, I said to him, so you're taking something that you learned that's new and you're taking it and applying it to a, an old trade that there's not that many people that are they're able to do what your dad can do. And so I was wondering if there, if you saw a lot of changes the way, you know, a student or an educator or society as a whole has seen the difference when it comes to trades and opportunities in the future. Here was a perfect case of it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think even Generation Z, this new generation is seeing it differently, right? Uh, and they're taking back because they're looking at, hey, we need, they're hearing the stories of, hey, we need, we need, we need. But they're also saying, I don't want debt. I don't want to take that on initially, right? And they're hearing the opportunities of, hey, go here, start working. I mean, you can go in the like, healthcare. You can go and if you get a job at a hospital as an entry level, the hospital system will pay for you to continue your education, right? Um, uh, it, you know, in the, in the trades, we're seeing a lot of individuals that will go through our program and then go into uh, an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. So like one of our electrical students, we, we had 16 that or 17 that finished yesterday. We were really excited about that and celebrated them. Um, they, they can go in and apply to um, one of the local uh, apprenticeships after they're finished and they're able to skip it, they take a test and skip the first year. So they're able to go in an accelerated pathway uh, and all of them get an, a, a guaranteed an interview. And it's a really uh, awesome opportunity. But when they finish that apprenticeship, we're seeing them want to come back to get an associate's degree and eventually a bachelor's degree. And so long we've been talking about, you need this four-year degree. And then you hear other people saying, no, what you need is this, you know, this trade or this, this skill. And I'm saying, well, we all have different pathways, right? Let's give pathways for, for everybody. Right. It's not an either or. It can be both as well, yes. uh, because you might want to eventually be a vice president at a, at a large you know, industry and they might require you to have a certain, you know, accounting degree or an MBA or something of that nature. And coming from the, the trade and the apprenticeship and working your way up, we've seen people do that. Well, but also if you went into a large, you know, construction firm or an electrician or something, and just imagine if you are in leadership position, but you also have the experience of the trade. I yeah. Mean, that, that to me, that says, you know, I, I know, I mean, I come from financial services and I come from a sales background and leadership background, and it always makes me laugh when somebody's teaching sales, but they've never sold anything. Right. You know, so it's the same thing, you know, I, right. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, it, it's so awesome that I think I ended up in this world because um, I talked about my wife a little bit earlier and, and talked about and, and once again, she is the more talented one and I can go on and on in examples. <laughs> um, when I met her, she was a cosmetologist and she was a master uh, cosmetologist. And then she goes, oh, so you're going to go back and finish college? I'll go with you. And so she did, and she finished her four-year degree afterwards. And then she had two things, and so she was able to go work for a Fortune 500 company selling hair care products. That same company also had pharmaceuticals. And so then at some point, she made the transition from one to the other, and she's built a career in, uh, 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 in pharmaceutical management and, and so on and so forth. I, I say all of that to say that, like, we all have unique pathways, right? And like try to say you're this or you're that or you're this, it, it's not it. We just need to provide people with the opportunities and the access to different educational opportunities so they can get the skills they need to go in the direction that they wanna go. And that's what I, I love doing. And so I, I'm really fortunate uh, in the role that I'm, I'm here at the college.
Yeah, and sometimes it's backwards. Like, I have a teaching degree, but when we all graduated and we became teachers, um, we were all laid off within six months because there were too many teachers. So last in, first out. Um, and then I went into, I mean, I, I did all kinds of things, but I went into construction. I, I did construction sales for roofing. I mean, so I did it the other way. I had the experience of teaching. So teaching was also selling and, you know, and so then I was in construction. And so I think I got the best of both worlds. You know? Oh, without a doubt. Right. Without a doubt. Well, because so much is sales, too. You can lean on those those education yeah. concepts. Right. I mean, it, it, it's all yeah. it, it's all so closely related when, when you're trying to, like, you know, educate a customer on bringing them through. And so and or or the opposite, selling a student on an idea of why they need to, to learn something. I, I mean, the, those skill sets aren't that far apart. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've seen and heard that registration and admission are down in universities. What are you seeing in workforce? Is it continuing to go up or, or what? We, um, yes. Uh, so to be honest with you, we, we've seen a, a constant increase in enrollment over the last couple of years. We did take a, a pretty big dip at, at one point. Um, but we're seeing up to uh, up to double digit returning percentages of students coming back. Uh, you know, like in my trades classes, we put them out there and, and they fill relatively quickly. Uh, we look at bringing on more sections. Uh, I, you know, in, in our healthcare, same. We can just put them, we, we've seen a dramatic increase in students that want to go into practical nursing or medical assisting, um, our cosmetology area. Uh, we have so many people that want to be in that space too. I mean, it's, it's, you know, as the college, we're able to bring such a great value because of the, even the price point of, of what we're able to offer. And we're able to bring the academic uh, experience and, you know, challenge to students, but at the same time, bring it at a price point because we're a state institution. Uh, that is very uh, affordable. And so I, I feel that we're seeing a large push of students back into short-term programs. And, um, and they're looking at that stair-step model as a, as a way forward. Yeah, absolutely. So what kind of companies do you look for to work with and to be strategic partnerships with? Is it what the, you know, the, what the environment is asking for? Or are there certain companies that you always look for? Um, to be honest with you, it, it's really, it's, it's about networking need, right? Uh, you know, I don't want to name drop different companies that we work with, yeah. um, but whether it's a large healthcare system, you know, of course, that's an easy one, right? They have a, a large amount of individuals. We have large construction uh, companies here uh, that, you know, that, that constantly need individuals. Or, you know, we also have, uh, you know, the shipyards, you know, based on where we are, we have uh, a large contingent. There are so many companies that need welders in our area because each one of those areas is expanding. And then you throw on top of that Jacksonville's expansion that we've seen in yes. this market over the last, you know, five years. Uh, you know, we've probably gotten 150,000 plus individuals that have moved into the region. And so, and I could be wrong about that. So, but I'm just, you know, that off of reports. I just don't want anybody to go, Judy, that guy said, you know, said, but anyway. Yeah, what, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, uh, infrastructure, we're seeing, uh, you know, more being put into our local infrastructure and, and, you know, different things of that nature. There's going to be building around here for the next 30 plus years, just based on what they're looking at now. Excellent. Okay. So you said before that you created this low voltage program. Is that what you, was it called low voltage? Okay. Yeah. Let's call it that. Um, so are there any new trends coming up other than AI? Is there anything like that you think you should, you know, get the step ahead of it because it's coming? Anything that you, you see or hear? I, I don't necessarily know that I'm going to go and say that, go to that perspective what and, and this is even outside of some of the things that we do but uh the autonomous vehicle side of the house right one of the things that the we have a great automotive um program here at the college and you know i i'm seeing our professors in that world uh working with you know uh national science foundation grants they're on the cutting edge of the autonomous vehicle and even how they're incorporating ai into to those vehicles and, and you know the transition of things 
uh, where even our welders are, are now, we're, we're looking at buying robots uh, to train our welders, not only how to weld, but how to run a robot, right? Uh, so, we, you know, that's going to be the next thing that we bring on board because that's what the shipyard uses. Um, so it, it's more how we can continue to infuse the cutting edge technology into the programs that we have. But we want to teach from where, you know, we, we want people to know the full gamut, the full spectrum. Right, right, right. Okay, so I want to shift just a little bit because you know that my main focus is women, you know. Yes, not absolutely. Just women, but mostly women. And while there are more and more trades and more and more positions and more and more opportunities for women in things that were 100% male, there's still a lot of work to do. So coming oh, sure. from, yeah, so but coming from, you know, being the only woman in, in uh, construction, the only woman in roofing and the only woman in financial services, um, I always make sure that we serve and support male dominated industries. But there was recently, I'm going to read this to you. There was recently um, a story, an article about it says you the u.s department of labor announces availability of six million dollar in grants to attract retain women in registered apprenticeships and non-traditional occupations now i know that your college does not necessarily have an apprenticeship program that you directly oversee what are your thoughts about this because truly there are more and more women popping up and 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 having a space in places that didn't exist before i i am not only am I, uh, I'm a giant supporter of this, but we are actually, we, we're moving on our own right, you know, to, to make the difference. Um, last year, for instance, we brought in uh, uh, Deila Ray, who is a, a, a world famous welder. And she came and she talked about like how she built a, a welding company and what she did. Uh, and we let her talk with all of our trade students and, and then she welded with them at the end of it. And it was just this wonderful event. Um, and so that, that's something that, you know, she's even got her own line of PPE and, and she's just been really great to, to our students. Um, other things that we've done is we've used, started utilizing women on our advertisements for those programs. For instance, our electrical program uh, has a, a woman that's featured on the front of it. And then a lot of times we'll use a, a woman on, uh, on our welding um items that we, we push out to individuals. Uh, and it's really to create that, right? Is to how can we say, hey, you are no longer in this area uh, or you were, you were kept out of this area, but there's this great opportunity. Yesterday, like I said, we had 17 electricians or elect electrician te technicians uh, finish our program. Three of them were women, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, I'm not saying that we're there yet, but we're we're at about 17 percent across our trades uh and then we see that um we see that building on our in our commercial vehicle driving which is another area that's traditionally uh, uh very male oriented um we're looking at actually we're we're looking at trying to hire faculty members um from uh or for instance, like our program manager over our con our construction trades she's female uh to bring a different into the um, the conversation. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm, I love to hear that. And and I know that you you know you definitely work hard to make things more available to more more people. So I'm right there with you. Like I think it's awesome. It, and then I'm going to flip it too. How do we get more men to realize that practical nursing is is a great opportunity and a pathway forward, or you know, and so on and so forth. And so yeah. uh, you know, I, I think there's opportunity there as well. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I had to, I was brought in by a university to talk about the soft skills. And when you talk, when you talk about soft skills, people naturally go to female. I mean, they just do. I'm not sure why, but they naturally do. And so when I was doing this, we had probably about 30 to 35 percent men in the room. It was standing room only. And at the end, one of them asked a question and he said, why are we not invited to this conversation? Now, it never said to women only. It never said that. It was just about soft skills. So they brought me back the next year and they said, we want you to do exactly the same thing. I said, do you want me to update it? Nope, exactly the same thing. And then we were like 50%. And then the third year, it was like 60%. And so it, you know, it does grow, but you're right. It's not just you know, bringing women into male-dominated industries. It has to be men that are also seeing the, the value and the impact that they can make in certain things. I, absolutely. And I think it's, it's exactly what you said, though, like you have to have intent, right? 
you have to do, we have to do the little things to really show that um, individuals be belong in those areas. I, I, I'm telling you, like seeing uh, the amount of uh, women that all of a sudden are interesting, uh, interested in welding or, or like I said, the electrical program or even HVAC, it, it's really, it, it's, it's really nice. It's really great to see. Yeah, and, and I like it because they're not being brought into a program because they're female. Right. Oh, they're, right. they're absolutely. Just checking a box because right. I've been there, done that, and that's not fun. Right. So, okay, can I brag about um, uh, Florida State College of Jacksonville for a moment? Absolutely. Okay. So during the fall of 2023, 25,832 individuals took a class at your college. Over 140 degrees and certifications were tied to local industry needs, and you were named as one of the 150 institutions eligible to compete for a $1 million Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence, the nation's signature recognition of high achievement and performance among two-year colleges. So congratulations on all levels, and what does that mean for, you know, for the school going forward? Uh, you know, our president is phenomenal. Um, he, Dr. A, uh, Dr. Avendano is, is just absolutely phenomenal. He's brought in a great vision. Uh, he's really um, opened the doors for us to work for this community. Um, and and he would like to see us end up number one in the next couple of years in that Aspen, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, he's really put a challenge on us to be our best and to be better every day. And, and you know that's what that's what we try to do, and we try to live that, and we try to push that forward uh, for our students and for this community. Okay, so what can you say about Florida State College of Jacksonville that somebody might not know that they should know? Um, I feel like we're like the best kept secret uh, in the in the Jacksonville region, uh, meaning that you know it seems like we've had three names over the years, whether it was you know FCCJ or. Um, so, you know, Florida State Junior College. And so, you know, nonetheless, um, I think that's changed. But we have so many alumni that come through here. I think people take us for granted and they don't necessarily see because they're like, oh, yeah, I know that school. That's where I got my AA or my AS and thinking very myopic uh, about the, the college. We have over 150 programs, right, for students uh, in, in so many different areas, uh, you know, whether it's aviation, uh, or, or healthcare, right? And, and so funeral services. And so there are things that I, you know, that I've learned being here that I, I didn't, I'm not saying that I didn't know that they existed, but I didn't know where students got trained for them until I got at this college. And so I think that's the real thing is to, um, for anybody that's interested in learning more to really see what we have, because we have that. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. So looking ahead, what are you most excited for for 2024 and how do you plan to continue making this amazingly positive impact on students and and um, and companies? Um, for me, we spent a lot of time and effort working with the Vall County Public Schools to build out in, in Baker County uh, to build out a, a few dual enrollment programs. And we built those out and we were able to get um, in those were in medical assisting, pharmacy technician, uh, and of course, HVAC uh, and welding, right? And so we've built those out and we've established them. I wanna see those grow. And so we've really putting a lot of effort into growing those. Uh, and like for our medical assisting, we see that we're gonna have 25 new students that are gonna start in that program in the fall, which we're really excited about. The pharmacy tech, we're seeing it grow exponentially as well. And then of course the trades do exceptionally well. Um, we also are starting a program, uh, a transition program for students with intellectual disabilities. And, and so that's pretty phenomenal. That's something that we haven't had before. We were just awarded a $1.49 million grant uh, to create that program. And so we're, we're going to start that in the fall. Um, we also have been working with the Arc of Jacksonville, which is a very similar, uh, they, and we have a program with those and the, with, with them, and they bring a group of students with intellectual disabilities onto campus every day. And so I want to see that continue to grow. Those students, they've built a business, they've built t they're, they're making t-shirts, they've sold like three, four thousand dollars worth of t-shirts. It's pretty awesome to see what they've been able to do and create and make happen uh, and, and when learning skills along the way. And so uh, uh, we're just really excited about a lot of things that we're doing on a lot of different fronts. And I want to see those mature. That's what I'm looking for in this next year. 
Uh, it's it's amazing. It, it, I mean, I can even I can see it. So I'm excited for you. So you know, there's going to be people that want to chat with you or connect with you. What's the best way to connect with you? Um, without a doubt, it's Gregory Worth G R E G O R Y dot W U R T H at F S C J dot E D U. Uh, please, I'm always. I would love to have a conversation with anyone about that. Uh, about anything that we do, or you can just reach out to, uh, you know, you can, my, my name is on the uh, Florida State uh, FSCJ website, so you can find me there as well. Uh, I, anything I can do to help anybody else in the community, or if somebody thinks that they have something that, that we could, you know, work with here, we're always open for a conversation. We're always looking for what's out there and, and what, you know, what can we do better and what can we do, you know, to serve our, our constituency. Well, I would say there's a lot to hear and a lot to learn about because, you know, being the best kept secret is wonderful, but when it explodes, it's even better. Right. When you start telling people, right. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I, I, I will. And, and I can, can I give one plug? Do you mind if I give one plug? So one of the things, if you are in a trade or you're in healthcare and you're looking to remodel your bathroom or you're looking to do something of that nature, reach out to your local community college because chances are they're just like we are and we, they need instructors and they need good instructors and they need adjunct instructors to teach part-time uh, to students. Uh, one of the hardest things we, uh, one of the biggest challenges we face is finding great instructors that want to give up their time people that are currently working in industry that want to come back and teach part-time. And so if, if you're out there and you want to do that, reach out to your local college. They will appreciate it, I promise. That's awesome. Thank you for saying that. That's that's really special because I know that there are other colleges that listen in and, and I know that they would appreciate that too. So, well, Greg, thank you so much for being with me. You, you did definitely share your brilliance. I know you weren't sure about that, but you definitely shared your brilliance. And I so appreciate you taking the time to be with me and everybody else listening. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. And, and like I said, congratulations on all your success with this show and everything else that you've done. And so uh, I really appreciate the, uh, like I said, the opportunity and, and thank you for anybody that's out there that listens. So I appreciate that as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you all for listening in uh, to Selling the Skirt with Judy Hoberman. We appreciate you joining us. And like I always say, we'll see you next time. All right, perfect. We are clear. That was awesome.